guys, welcome back to my channel, Faith's Garden. Um, it's Faith here. If you guys don't know, that's my name. <laughs> um, so this video is going to be about uh, the Esther Fast. And not just any Esther Fast. This is about the Esther Fast that Morgan Tracy J led on her channel and her ministry. And it's just a review of what I've gotten gotten from it, some of the revelation that I, I was able to get from it, and um, just um, a detailed uh, kind of what was in this fasting guide. She provides a fasting guide as well as a playlist, which unfortunately I was not able to access, but that's less important. You can find any playlist and go with what you've got, girl. Don't give up. Um, just because that one thing, you know. But people like to focus on the one thing. And we don't, I don't focus on the one thing around here. I've got too many other things. So let's just keep going. Um, I guess I'll start with the guide. You'll be able to see it on the screen. Just a quick overview of what I'm talking about. But immediately it starts off with just a beautiful picture of these women who look like they're in this really serene, peaceful, um, just manner. And they're all looking up and it's a really beautiful picture and it's really well done. And I think she did a great job putting this together, um, making those decisions with her team. Um, there's a little letter inside of there. It tells you what's inside the guide, what you will gain from the fast. Um, no more doubting your walk with God. Getting past mental barriers. Becoming fearless in faith and purpose. Guys, okay, when I get into, like, what I was able to get from it, all of this is going to make sense because even just saying that now, I'm like, girl, that is so true. She did not lie about exactly what you gain from this this fast and this guide so she did a very very good job she has these really cute um just kind of meanings of like fasting it's like what you would find in a dictionary a couple of those throughout it um again it tells you what the fast will consist of there's some frequently asked questions that are helpful to making a decision about whether you want to do this fast about the type of fast that it is, um, how you can modify, if you can modify the fast, um, the time frames, fasting on your period or while you're sick, um, and how can you get help with your fast. So those are the FAQs, Frequently Asked Questions. There is a page about fasting benefits. Um, what you gain in a fast, you get in closer relationship with God, you break soul ties. Okay, ladies, that's so important for those of us who did not wait until marriage to have sex. Um, um, transformed mind, transformed body, health improvements, weight loss. Okay, <laughs> I mean, that's not what we're in it for, but that's just a, one of the things that you gain in a fast. Um, and what you could fast for. There's a list of different things that she gives you ideas about what you can be fasting for. For me, I was fasting for my schizophrenia and multiple personality disorder. Um, I haven't been officially diagnosed, but I've kind of just come to the fact that this is the best way that I can describe about what's going on with me. So that was really cool how she provided that. Um... It goes over Esther fast day one, day two, and day three. What to expect, expect about where we're going in this fast. Um, the three uh, goals. So the first goal is it's all mental. Second goal is unbind her. And the third goal is establish her. And this is all over three days. Um, and then the other things to fast from, like social media, television, red meats. There's a food list of what you can and cannot have, modifications. There's a journal plan. And it asks you different questions about what you would like to gain spiritually 
what you are expecting to receive from this fast, what was what has held you back in your life, just different questions that really gets the ball rolling in the right direction about where, about like heart posture and what you're expecting and just to have an expecting heart in the, in the fast. And I, I really, really enjoyed doing these journal questions. Um, so yeah. And then she tells you about her playlist. And then you get into the daily plans. Mindset matters. Okay, so she's talking about your mindset during the fast. Guys, she really went into a lot of different, like, it's amazing how she was able to put this together. Like, your mindset during a fast is so important, and I love that she mentions that in this fast, uh, in this fasting guide. And then, um, day one, you'll see that it's talking about it's all mental and then she has the videos to go along with each day of the fast. So there's day one, mental battles. Day two, what was it? Unbind her. And day three, establish her. So you can go on YouTube, no matter what time you're doing this fast at, you can still use this guide and follow along in a fast. And it's so cool. I really, really, really enjoyed this. Like, kudos to you, Morgan. Kudos to you and your team that put this together. This is absolutely amazing. And I love it. I really love it. And it's beautiful at the same time. So aesthetically pleasing. It's a lot of fun, too. Um, so there's some fasting questions. Um, and I've answered all of these questions um, some of these I answered in a journal, some of these I answered in, um, like, notes on my iPad. So, you can do that. Really cool. Day two, unbind her. Prayer list, there's different activities to do, you know. And in the videos, she tells you more about what fasting should look like and how you keep yourself busy and things like that. It's really not a time, like fasting is not a time to just kind of take a break from everything. It's more of a time to lean into the Lord and rely upon Him. Um, so you still have to go about your day-to-day -day life things, like doing laundry, going to work, going to school, um, and stuff like that. But you know, she she kind of just leads us through that. And you can tell there was a lot of careful planning. And there was a lot of prayer that went into this. And that's what I really want to tell you guys about this fast. And it's evident. Because this fast, and she said it herself about herself, but she this fast absolutely wrecked me. I was a boo-hooing all day at one point. I was just in awe and there were things coming up, you know, spiritually. There was obstacles, of course, to face, to face, but weeping for, for things that I hadn't thought about in so long. And then there was joy in knowing who I was as a child of God. And then there was the establishing, okay? So I'll just get into, that's that's the fasting guide, right? It was just, it was really absolutely amazing. I love it. But um, some of my questions, I answered the questions that she had asked in the fasting guide and then I, I guess I'll just share with you a few things um what do you desire to gain spiritually that was one of the questions and for me it was freedom from tormenting spirits because if I'm being honest coming from it and from a spiritual perspective knowing who you are as a child of God when you get into these mental health um, problems, it feels like torment. 
to be plagued with anxiety, to be plagued with multiple personalities. I mean, it feels spiritual. And that's my viewpoint on it. And I just want to make that very clear. I am not a mental health professional. I am just a woman who's living her life for the Lord, looking to seek the Lord daily in my walk. And that's something that this fast has taught me. Um, but yeah, it feels from a spiritual perspective and that's, this is how I choose to pursue it because I know that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And that's the answer that I've got. And I'm not saying that I don't take medications. I'm not saying that I completely disregard what doctors and other health professionals have to say. I'm just saying that my truth and where I stand, I stand on the word. I stand on the rock. I stand on the firm foundation. And that's where I get my perspective, my view, my viewpoint, all of that good stuff. That's where I stand. I'm not a mental health professional. I'm not getting into yoga and, and uh, you know, things like that. I'm not seeking out, like, different herbals, listics to relax my mind and kumbayas. I'm not saying that those don't work for people. I don't know. I'm not going to say anything like that. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that this is what works for me. And sometimes it doesn't feel like it's working. Let's be honest, right? I mean... Going forward in faith, you don't see what's happening. Faith is the substance of things hoped for but not seen. So I don't see anything happening sometimes. Sometimes it gets worse. And I'm like, Lord, what am I supposed to do? But it's faith. And that's, I choose to live a faith-filled life. And dealing with schizophrenia and multiple personality disorder, I'm giving it to the Lord. And that's what you can hope to find in viewing my videos. So, um, the, for, the, for the question, what do you desire to gain spiritually? So, I said freedom from tormenting spirits and to be able to help others in the midst of my torment. Um, so that's what I said I desire to gain spiritually. Another question was, what are you expecting to receive on this fast? And then I was completely honest with myself with this question. And that's so important when you're going into a fast is to be honest with the Lord. There's no better place to be completely raw and honest. I mean, all the nooks and crannies, all the dirty little things that you can't tell people, all the things that you're hiding, all the things that you're lying about, all the things that you, you're you trying to be, all the people that you hate, you need to, you, you know, you would want to bring that up. You know, he's not afraid of your hatred. He's not afraid of your envy. He's not afraid of your lying. He's not afraid of your doubting, of your guessing, of your incom you know, your discomplacency. He's not afraid of those things, so it's a time to be raw and honest. Um, but what are you expecting to receive on this fast? And I said, I did not imagine myself being able to be healed. I didn't see that for myself. I didn't think it was something that I could go in expecting, but I wanted to be expecting of that healed. I didn't envision myself healed. I didn't think it was possible. I thought it was so far from anything that could happen. But, yeah. You know, and then you remember that he can do anything. and Then you, you try to align yourself with what he tells you is possible, but... That was pretty hard because I had believed a lie. I was believing a lie that it couldn't happen for me. And um, another question was, what has held you back in your life? How do you desire to feel and think during the fast? I desired to feel relaxed and peaceful, to be seen, to be able to see myself, and to be able to think clearly and with no anxiety, no ADHD, no 
um, paranoia. Um, those are some of the things that I desired to feel during the fast. Um, how do you desire to feel after your fast? I quickly realigned with what I knew that the Lord could do. And I said I desire to feel free and like I know that I am. So in faith I spoke that. In faith I wrote that. And in faith, I'm still believing that, even though I feel like I haven't seen it. But, you know, feelings can lie. And we walk by faith and not by sight. So, um, my biggest dreams and desires, that was one of the questions. I don't know. All right. Now, um, I just talk about how I've felt a little bit um so day one I'm just gonna tell you like I was not hungry throughout this whole thing and then I came to the realization that I needed to be obedient to my mom and my father and do what they tell me to do and I have to take medication so you know, at first I was like, you know, the Lord is going to sustain me on this fast and that's how I'm going to get through it. And then my mom calls me and she's like, oh, so you're doing a fast. And we, we get to talking a little bit and she's like, you know, you need to eat something with your medication. And I'm like, fine. So I didn't end up doing the fast the way that I thought I was going to do it, which was take my medication and not eat anything, which is dangerous. Okay, that's why we need to honor our mothers and our fathers, because they know better than we do. It says so in the Bible that things will go well for you. It's the one commandment with a promise. Okay, that things will go well for you and you will live a long and prosperous life if you honor your mother and your father. If you don't know where to start, if you don't know what to do, start there. Honor them. Okay, so important has completely changed my life. All right. So, um, but I guess if you, if you really want to think about it, like, he will sustain us during the fast. Like, I was unsure about how to handle that with the medication. I thought I couldn't fast because I was taking medication. And really, all I had to do was look at the calories that I was supposed to take in when I take my medication. And it's like 500 calories. So I counted calories on what I was eating. And that's how I was able to do my fast. And um, it doesn't talk about medications in the fasting guide. But maybe that's something that she'll add one day. And um, yeah, honor your mother and your father, guys. And he sustained me because he reminded me to honor my mother and my father. And God works in mysterious ways. So that's how the beginning of my fast went with those really great questions. Some of the revelation that I received. So the Esther fast, right? If you're not familiar, in Esther, the book of Esther in the Bible... Um, it talks about Queen Ahasuerus, I mean, King Ahasuerus, who is reigning at the time of the Jewish people's exiles. Um, the Jewish people in exile. Sorry. King Ahasuerus, who is reigning over the kingdom during the Jewish exile. Um, and Queen Vashti, there's this big banquet going on. Queen Vashti at the time, who he's married to, decides not to come to the king when she is, um, called. So, she decides not to come. It's this big outrage, this big disgrace. King Ahasuerus is pissed off and... So he says that, you know, she's not going to be queen anymore. So fast forward, the eunuchs 
that he has um, come up with a way for him to get a new queen. And it's taking all the virgins in the land, not, I don't know if it was all the virgins, but the virgins in the land and the beautiful young virgins, okay? And Esther was one of them. Now, Esther is Jewish, but she's told by her cousin, is it her cousin? I think it's her cousin or her uncle. She's told by her cousin or uncle, Mordecai, who is on the king's guard, not to reveal who she is as a Jewish woman. Okay? So, fast forward. Queen Esther is chosen to be queen. She, at first she's just one of the virgins and then she's chosen to be queen. And, um, and then there's this guy named Haman who's very close to the king. He's one of the king's best men. And Haman hates Mordecai. And he hates him so much that he forms an edict to have all the Jewish people killed. And Mordecai is completely in ruin. He is so upset. And he goes to the middle of the middle of the square and tears his robe, falls on his face, and he's completely broken. Um, and is in sackcloth for the remainder of the time that this edict is going to be lived out. Um, then he, he thinks of something. He goes to Queen Esther and he tells her that this is going on. You have to tell King Ahasuerus not to do this. And you have to tell him who you are. So basically this is where the fasting comes from. She tells Mordecai that tell the people to fast for three days and not to eat, not to drink. And that's where the fasting comes from, for three days. And this is before the time that she will go to present herself to the king and ask for um, this edict not to be lived out. So then... You know, she says this, this famous line that everybody kind of, um, she says this famous line that everybody kind of looks to, looks to and says, perhaps you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. And that's what Mordecai says to Queen Esther. So then Esther approaches the king after the fasting has been done. Esther approaches the king. And uh, she invites, Esther approaches the king, she invites Haman, the king's best man, okay, and King Ahasuerus to a banquet that she has prepared. So she doesn't tell him right away what she's going to be asking for. He, he, he promises her, her up to half of the kingdom, okay? She, he loves this woman so much. He's so, like, enthralled by her. He offers her half of the kingdom right then and there. But she doesn't go for it, you know? She kind of just waits for him. to Waits to reveal what she's asking for. Okay? So, it's the night before the banquet. The king cannot sleep. Okay? This part's really important because... Before before the edict is made for the Jews to be killed, Mordecai saves the king. And the, the king doesn't even hear about it. He stops some guys from coming in there and killing him, okay? Mordecai's doing what he's supposed to do. He's doing his job. And he stops some guys from killing the king. So the king didn't even hear about it. He's doing his kingly business. Everything's going down. The edict's been made. The, the Jews are going to be killed. Mordecai goes to Esther to tell her to... You're here for such a time as this. You need to tell the king who you are. 
everything's going down, the king can't sleep, the banquet's going to happen, he can't sleep, okay? And the king asks for the royal report. And then he hears the news about how Mordecai saved his life, okay? Crazy, 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 crazy. Okay, he hears the news about how Mordecai can't sleep. I mean, <laughs> he hears the news about how the king, how Mordecai saved his life, the king's life, okay? So, then, uh, the king tells Haman, the exact man who Haman Mordecai, to honor this man with everything that Haman ever wanted, Okay? Royal robes, royal horses being driven through town saying this is the man that the king sees as equal to himself. He's amazing. I love this guy. The king can't get enough of Mordecai. And Haman, after all the said and done, he's invited to the royal banquet the second night. And then it was revealed that... This edict is going to not only kill Esther's people, but it could very well kill her. And then Haman is terrified because King Ahasuerus is pissed off. He's so mad, right? So he goes into the garden. Haman is seen falling all over Esther, begging her, begging her, begging her, please, 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 please. Don't, 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 don't say that. I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know. All of these things, you know, you can just imagine. And then he sees him falling all over Esther this way, and he says, you dare violate the king, the queen in the king's presence? And then they cover his face and take him away. And the very gallows that Haman had built to hang Mordecai on are his own death. He is hung on the, on the gallows, and his ten sons are hung on the gallows. So, a new edict is written. The Jews are saved, and they can then do what was going to be done to them. And kill everyone, and plunder the land, and they call this holiday Purim. And it's celebrated to even this day. But... This fasting, this whole story, God is not mentioned, I think, but one time, or not one time at all. One of the two. But he's not mentioned very often. But it's understood that they were reliant on the fasting, they were reliant on God by showing their vulnerability and fasting. Because... They could have been slaughtered. And I think this, this story shows his God's provision. It shows how he moves and works in ways that we quite don't understand. Even from the way that King Ahasuerus couldn't sleep the night before and then was given the royal report about Mordecai and his, his action in saving the king. So... That was just a quick overview of what Esther is all about. You can read it for yourself when you do the fast. The guide goes over what to read on what days. Okay. So, some of the revelation that I took away from it. And I know this video is kind of long, guys. It's coming to the end. My mom says I gotta stop making long videos. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Love you. Revelation. Okay. So some of the revelations that I took away from this fast. I may not be facing something in the natural like Queen Esther, but I can be just as strong and persistent as she was to see the result for a people of God. Everyone dealing with mental illness, I'm standing up for me first and then for them. And that's how I feel. I feel after this fast, I definitely came away with an understanding of what it would take to pursue 
this ministry this way, to pursue helping his daughters and, and sons to be able to overcome mental illness. You know? I definitely came away with a deeper understanding of what it would take, of the reliance that I would have to have on the Lord and the Holy Spirit to be able to do it. And uh, that completely shook me, guys. All the things that I thought I knew. And that, you know, it's still fresh, so I'm still learning. But it's a journey like no other. It's so exciting. I pray everyone have this walk, have this journey with Jesus. It's amazing. And fasting is not something that you have to... Oh, woe is me. I have to fast. I can't eat anything. It's actually a time to be able to get close. And he just, mm, when he comes in the room, it's so amazing. <laughs> I can't tell you enough. I highly recommend this fast, you guys. It's so good. Okay. So Mordecai is Esther's cousin. And he raised her. Mordecai is on the, on the king's guard, and Esther is now the queen. Imagine, right, during this fast, you are on the king's guard, and Jesus is king. And he's already our family. Mordecai is a cousin to Esther. Jesus is a brother to us. So we can go to Jesus and ask that the edict be removed. I don't know. Yeah, that was cool. I, I thought that was good. I thought that was really good. Okay, so that was my revelation for during the fast. And then I've got some confirmation. Okay. So Morgan, this one had to do with you if you're watching this <laughs> confirmation on day three I had a moment today where I thought I might turn back to smoking cigarettes and I just sat down and didn't run to the store to get some Jesus was my strength when I was crumbling as I watched the third day video Morgan mentions not turning back to smoking or vaping I am established so that was huge because I almost turned back to smoking during the fast. I was so distraught, so moved, so broken at the time, so hurt by the things that were coming up during the fast and the negative feelings. Um, but it didn't overtake me. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus was definitely, definitely in the room. Working as he always is. But we tend to forget so quickly. Anyway. Um, and then I had people walking up to me telling me I sounded like a minister. That was pretty great. And, you know, I think it was like the day after I finished the fast or the last day of the fast. I think it was the last day of the fast. Um... I had this young man tell me I sounded like a minister as I was talking to another young man who was dressed like a woman. And I was just telling him about the love of Jesus. And he came up to me and told me I sounded like a minister. So, established was the last day. And I definitely felt established. Um, and then, uh, days after the fast, just over and over again, people telling me, that, um, I, that, you know, I'm very becoming, uh, just having these great, soft, intimate moments with strangers about the love of God and Jesus and his healing properties and, and just his healing aspects and his heart for us and all this is beautiful moments days after. And that's what fasting can do. Confirmation, revelation, you know, all of those things. Not to mention the compliments about my beautiful face. 
<laughs> that was cool. I had like a hundred of those. I didn't know how to act, y'all. I didn't know how to act. <laughs> okay, and then there's some questions after the fast. What does my next level look like? I'm not going to tell you my answers to these. What mental barriers are holding me back? What are my biggest fears? What scriptures minister to me the most and why? How can I give God my all during this fast? How can I pull myself out of a pit I've been? And then um, another one of the activity was just prayer journal. Just a prayer journal. And that's pretty intimate stuff, so I won't tell you that. And then the last day, it talks about what God wants to establish you in. Okay, before I said that those were the last day questions, but that was like day two questions. But the last day is establish, which means to make firm. She tells you that in her guide. Guys, don't sleep on this guide. It's so rich. So good. Thank you, Morgan. You guys can just look over that, but there's some... How different would your life be if you were firmly established in God and you walked in that daily? Wow. What a question. So good. What can you be doing to be established in God and in your purpose? Okay. But yeah. That's what I got from the fasting... That was my first look at the guide. That was my look, take. That was my take on the guide. <laughs> and um, I just want to give a big, big thank you to Morgan Tracy J and her team. And you guys are doing such a great job. And I can tell that you guys are praying over everything and that you guys are taking your time and you are ministering to each other and I just can tell it's a beautiful atmosphere to be able to work. Thank you for doing what you do, Morgan. And um, I hope you guys were able to enjoy this video and get a real good look and perspective from someone who, you know, was in need of a fast. And doesn't do fasts often. This is like my first real fast, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And I pray that you guys be blessed. Bye. Love you.